I'm a big fan of Apple and I've been using my iPhone and MacBook every single day for the past decade. So I got really excited at first back in 2019 when I heard that Apple was launching a new credit card called the Apple Card. But then I did some research and figured out that the Apple Card was really just okay with a few good features, but it was actually pretty weak compared to most other credit cards on the market. Now, four years after it was released, the Apple Card has been making headlines as a potential failure, at least in the short term, because it's been reported the card is responsible for over $1 billion in losses for gold Goldman Sachs, who's the bank that Apple partnered with to issue this card. But as Apple and Goldman hopefully start to turn things around, part of their ongoing partnership now includes the addition of a new high yield Apple savings account that's available exclusively to Apple Card customers. And this savings account currently pays 4.15% APY as of the filming of this, which is one of the best rates for any savings account out there. So in this video, I wanna talk about this Apple Card and Apple savings account combination and go over the positives and the negatives, and most importantly, who should get these products, because even though they have a few good features, I'm still not convinced that these are the best options for most people. So I'll explain why throughout this video. Now let's start off here by talking about the Apple Card. So first of all, there's no sign-up bonus aside from maybe small limited time promotions they run every now and then. And normally when a credit card has no sign-up bonus, that's a big red flag for me because there's so many other great credit cards out there with sign-up bonuses, so it's hard to pass those up. But at least the Apple Card has no annual fees, no foreign transaction fees, and even no late fees, which is good news for a lot of people that just hate credit card fees. The card also earns what Apple calls daily cash back, which is basically cash back that accumulates in your account in real time as you earn it. So you get 3% back at Apple and select merchants like Exxon, Mobil, Nike, Uber, Walgreens, and a few more. And if you do open an Apple card to buy an Apple product, not only do you get 3% back, but Apple also gives you the option to finance the purchase at 0% interest for six to 24 months, depending on the product. But there's sort of a big issue that some people run into, which actually ends up tanking their credit score that I'll talk more about in a minute here. Now with the Apple Card, you also get unlimited 2% back when you use Apple Pay to pay with this card. So basically anytime you're able to use Apple Pay online or with tap to pay at a store using your iPhone or Apple Watch, you'll get 2% back. The bad news with this though, is that again, this is only 2% back with Apple Pay. So when you get the actual physical metal Apple Card in the mail that everyone likes to show off for the cool metal design and the sound that it has, that's only earning 1% back on everything when you swipe that actual card. So that's one of the main negatives I've had with the Apple Card ever since it launched because it really never makes sense to actually use this physical card itself because 1% back is basically the bare minimum that pretty much any other basic credit card can get. Then for the Apple Savings Account, like I said, this is a new feature that's offered exclusively for Apple Card customers. So you do need to be an owner or a co-owner of an active Apple Card account to get this. So I view that as another negative because I'm an Apple user without an Apple Card. So I'm not able to open this account. Now, Apple Savings is also free with no fees or minimums, which is good. And you can open this account by following the instructions on Apple's website. So you just have to go to the daily cash section within your Apple Wallet app. And then from there, you should be able to open it. Then once you have it open, you can link any other external bank account you might have with Chase. Chase, Wells Fargo, SoFi, or really any of those. And you can deposit funds straight into your Apple savings from there. And a big thing to note here is that since Apple is partnered with Goldman Sachs, it's actually Goldman who's going to be technically holding your money because they're a bank and they offer protections for your money. And that's really important because this is gonna allow you to have FDIC insurance, which protects up to $250,000 of your deposits. And in the fine print, 250,000 is actually the maximum balance allowed for the Apple savings account. So there's no minimums, but actually there is a maximum here. Now, one feature that Apple wants to highlight with the savings account is that it's going to link up to your daily cash that you earn from your Apple card. And then as you earn that daily cash in real time, you can basically just have that directly deposited into the savings account automatically where it's going to start earning interest at the high yield 4.15% rate. And again, that's just the APY as of the filming of this video. So interest rates change over time and Apple and Goldman will increase or decrease this rate to go along with the market. But for anyone unfamiliar with high yield accounts, that 4.15% APY is really good and right up there with other top high yield accounts from banks like SoFi, Ally, and Capital One. Now next here, I want to go over an example of how the Apple Card and Apple Savings account can work really well together by taking advantage of some of these features that we just talked about. But in this example, I also want to go over the common mistake that a lot of people unknowingly make by using these features that can actually tank your credit score by as much as 50 to 100 points. So let me explain. Now for this video, I decided to see if I could actually get approved for an Apple Card. So to do that, I just went over to my Apple Watch 
Wallet app on my iPhone and tapped on Apply Now. Then I had to enter and confirm a bunch of information. And after submitting all of that to Goldman Sachs, I was told that I was approved for a $3,000 credit limit. And because Apple only does a soft credit pull to initially approve me, there was no effect to my credit score when I did this. However, if I did choose to accept this offer at the bottom of the screen, then they would do a hard credit pull, which will affect my credit score just a little bit in the short term. But I do like that you know if you're approved in the first place before you actually do anything to affect your credit score. So that's a nice feature in the application process that not all credit cards have. Now, I did not accept this offer just because I think there's better credit cards out there for me for both cashback and travel that I'll tell you about later on here. But they were also giving me only a $3,000 limit, which is pretty low compared to all the other credit cards I have. And maybe this is just one way of Goldman trying to limit any more potential future losses or loss provisions from Apple Card customers since they've already set aside over a billion dollars for losses, like I said before. And usually a credit limit like this is not a big deal, but it can be if we're trying to use the Apple Card to finance the purchase of maybe a $2,000 MacBook Pro at 0% interest over the next 12 months. So let's say that I accepted that Apple Card offer for a $3,000 limit, and then I financed a new $2,000 MacBook Pro and paid it off at 0% interest for the next year. We're gonna ignore taxes and fees here to keep this simple. So that's $2,000 divided by 12 payments over 12 months, which is $166.58 per month. And to many people, spending $166 per month sounds a lot better than dropping the full $2,000 all at once. Plus, I'd also get 3% daily cash back, which is about $60 dollars here, which will all be earned up front and deposited automatically into my Apple savings account where it'll start to earn interest. But here's the catch with this purchase. Since I was only given a $3,000 credit limit by doing that 0% financing payment plan, what's going to happen is that full $2,000 purchase amount is going to show up as my balance on this credit card account. And then each month as I make a monthly payment, that balance will drop by $166.58. So it's awesome that I'm not paying any interest here and I don't have to spend the full $2,000 all up front. But a $2,000 balance on a $3,000 credit limit represents a credit utilization percentage of around 66%. And it's this high credit utilization that drops the credit scores of many people that might not be familiar with how these scores are calculated. Now, credit utilization falls under the amounts owed factor of your credit score. And it turns out this is one of the most important and highest impact factors since it accounts for about 30% of your score. And the general rule of thumb here is to keep credit utilization at least below 30%, but ideally below 10% to have the best effect on your score. And the lower the utilization percentage, the better. So for example, I like to keep all my other credit cards at around one to 2%. Or in other words, I'd want to aim for a balance of only around 30 to $60 with a $3,000 limit. So having a $2,000 balance that's equal to a 66% utilization that will drop your score. And it's not even factoring in any other regular everyday purchases you might put on this Apple card, which can further increase your balance and your utilization. So you got to be careful. Now that utilization percentage is going to go down and your credit score is going to go back up over time as you work through this payment plan or if you just decide to pay off this MacBook in full at any point. And also the effect on your credit score with a purchase like this will not be as severe if you're given a higher credit limit or if you have a very mature and diverse credit profile with a bunch of other accounts. But we know for a fact that many customers have actually been approved for the Apple Card with fairly low credit scores and lower incomes. So there's definitely a large number of people out there that could see big drops to the credit score in the short term when they finance a purchase of a new expensive Apple Apple product using a 0% payment plan. So again, just be careful if you are planning to use the Apple card for something like this. Now, another important area of credit cards that gets a lot of people into trouble is where they carry a balance month to month and then pay interest on that balance. So for my Apple card application, they were offering an APR of 23.74%, which is super high, but also pretty normal compared to any other credit card right now. But because I pay off my statement balances on time and in full every single month, I've never paid a cent of interest. And I explained the process of of how to pay a credit card bill the right way in another video that I'll link to down below that you should go ahead and check out after this if you wanna learn how that works. But for anyone that does carry a balance for whatever reason, Apple does a great job here at visually displaying what that means for you and what you're gonna pay in terms of interest. That way, hopefully, you actually stay motivated to get away from that credit card debt by seeing all that really transparent information. And I actually really appreciate what Apple is doing here to have a feature like this to hopefully encourage better financial habits for the millions and millions of people out there that could collectively carry almost a trillion dollars in credit card debt across the US. Maybe this is another reason why Goldman is actually having a really hard time at breaking even with their Apple Card partnership because Apple is not just encouraging customers to pay only the minimum balance, which is something a lot of other companies do. But even without this feature, I still think that everyone should strive to avoid paying interest on their own by only using credit cards if they treat them like a debit card anyway and pay them off in full. 
So I always try to remind people of that here on my channel. So go subscribe down below to learn more about how to get the most out of credit cards. Now, the big question here is why do I not use the Apple Card and Apple Savings account myself? And what do I recommend instead? So first of all, the savings account is very basic and doesn't really offer much else other than that high APY of 4.15%. So I can earn interest and see my savings go up for the daily cash that I would earn if I had an Apple Card. But I prefer bank accounts that just have a lot more features and give me a greater overview of my entire financial picture. Personally, I really like SoFi for their checking and savings account because they pay up to 4.20% APY with no fees or minimums as well. They also have so many other features where I can basically organize my money across accounts, set aside money in savings vaults and do a whole bunch of other things. So I'll leave a link to them down below is my preferred bank account that I've been using for the past few years if you wanna learn more about SoFi. But I also covered a few other of the best bank accounts on the market in another video that I'll link to down below as well if you wanna go ahead and check that out to hear more about a few other options. Now, like I said before, you actually need to have the Apple Card in the first place to even open up this basic Apple savings account. So because I do not have the Apple Card, I don't even have the option to get this account anyway. And the three main reasons why I do not have the Apple Card are that number one, the card is also too basic for me. Number two, the rewards are not great. And number three, I think there's just better options out there that basically represent an opportunity cost for me if I pass them up. So the Apple Card is basic and the rewards aren't great because it's a card earning 3% back with only select merchants, including Apple, and 2% back only with Apple Pay, and that's just too limiting for me. So if I really wanted a more straightforward 2% card, then I would just get the City Double Cash to earn the same 2% back on everything, but I don't have that requirement of needing to use Apple Pay to get that higher cash back. And actually, I prefer to go with the whole points and miles side of the credit card world to redeem those points and miles for travel, which gives me more value. So instead of the Apple Card or the City Double Cash, I use the Chase Freedom Unlimited to earn 1.5% back in the form of chase points that are worth two cents per point at a minimum in my chase trifecta setup. And I've made other videos about that that I'll link to down below. So really the Freedom Unlimited is giving me 3% back in value at a minimum on everything. But I'm also a big believer in getting multiple credit cards to get the most back from your spending in different categories. So there's other no annual fee credit cards out there like the Capital One Saver one that earns 3% cash back on dining, groceries, entertainment, and streaming. Or the Amex Blue Cash Every Day that earns 3% cash back on groceries, gas, and online shopping or even the city custom cash that gets 5% back on your highest eligible spend category every single billing cycle. And all those cards have a welcome bonus of around $200. So to me, all those are cards that I would easily recommend over the Apple Card. Now, overall, I would actually say that the simplicity of the Apple Card and the Apple Savings Account combination is what will make or break it for most people when deciding if these products are worth it. So for me, I know that with just a little bit of work, I can use other credit cards out there to optimize my regular spending and get a much better return on spend for stuff that I was gonna buy anyway. And like I said, the simplicity of the Apple Card and Apple Savings account is what basically ruins it for me because using those represents an opportunity cost. But for a lot of other people out there that value that same simplicity, or maybe even don't fully understand credit cards and how they work, then the Apple Card and Apple Savings account might work really well for you because it is going to be very easy to use and Apple does a pretty good job at encouraging you to avoid carrying a balance and paying interest. However, if you are like me and you're trying to optimize your wallet to earn even more cash back or points and miles for travel, Cool then I would definitely try to get the right credit cards for your wallet. So make sure you go ahead and check out this video over here next on the only five credit cards you need because that's going to tell you exactly what cards to get to maximize the value that you can get back from your spending. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.